Hey, welcome everyone. My name is Alex Munoz. I'm Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admission here at SMU. And I'm very glad you've chosen to take some time every day to learn a little more about our great university. Today I'm going to tell you about SMU, our academics, extracurriculars, student life, um, but also the important application process. Uh, this photo I really like to start out with because this gives you a good perspective of where we're located in relation to downtown Dallas. SMU is located about 10 minutes north of downtown Dallas, Texas. But as you can tell this photo, we are surrounded by a neighborhood. We are in a residential area. So you do get the best of both worlds. Um, when you're a student, I always like to think that you get uh, the hub and the, all the opportunities of a city. But then again, when you're on campus, there's so much stuff to walk to, shops and restaurants in our immediate area. So you do get the best of both worlds. And then to go over the general stats about the university, SMU is medium sized for about 6,700 undergraduates, which I think is the perfect size, not too big, not too small. An incoming freshman class for us is about 1,500 students. And that's the size we like to aim for so we can say the medium size that we are. Our average class size is about 22 to 23 students. So you really get to know professors, they get to know you. They actually take attendance in most if all your classes, so they know when you're there, they know when you're not there. They hold you accountable for going. Um, obviously, in your freshman year, when you're taking more general classes, maybe intro to biology, microeconomics, those classes tend to be a little larger, maybe about 70 to 80 students. But we don't have lecture halls that see two, 300 people. So you're never going to be in a class that large since we don't have rooms that big. Um, so your general freshman courses are still pretty reasonably sized. Freshman English is actually maxed out at about 15 to 16 students. So you're for your entire first and second semester of freshman English, you're going to be in that smaller class size because we think that's a pretty important class with your trans transition from high school writing to college writing. And it really sets you up with your writing style for the next three years on campus. As I mentioned, our freshman class is usually about 1,500 students. This past year's freshman class was about 37% from the state of Texas, about 58% from the other 49 states, and about 5% international, representing about 33 different countries. So it's a really diverse student body. People come from all over the state of Texas, all over the country, and all over the world. And I think that's what attracts a lot of students to SMU, is being able to interact with people from different experiences and different backgrounds. And SMU's student body does not have that feeling of everyone from the same high school or everyone from the same neighborhood. Um, I think having people from all over definitely adds to your experience as well. Um, our top five states on campus besides Texas are usually gonna be California and Florida, but then also Missouri, Illinois, and Connecticut usually round out that top five states besides Texas on campus. We do have over 100 majors and minors, and they're all split between five different undergraduate colleges. When you're applying to SMU on your application, it will ask you for your number one and number two preferred major. You are not bound to those majors if you're admitted to the university. You can change that once you're here at the university, um, but definitely indicate what you think you may want to study, um, just so you can also be reviewed for scholarships from those academic areas, possibly. Um, also to keep in mind is that about 50% of our students double major. So if you have multiple interests, whether they're within one college or between two different colleges, it's fairly common for our students to pick and choose one or two different areas um, or a major and a minor, major and uh, two minors, double major and a minor. It's really up to you, with you and your academic advisor to talk through how you can get your interest completed while you're here during your four year plan. All right, we'll go through each of our five colleges so you have an idea of which majors are housed beneath each one. To start off with, the Dedman College of Humanities and Sciences is the largest of the five colleges. The Dedman College is home to the humanities majors, so English, math, history, foreign languages, as well as our uh, natural sciences. So natural sciences of biology, chemistry, physics, um, I like to say it's home to all the ologies, psychology, sociology, biology, anthropology, and on those lines will be through this college. Now, this is the largest of the five colleges. About 50% of our students will receive a major from Dedman. But as I mentioned, a large portion of our students double majors, so that second major usually will come from Dedman as well. Um, this is also home to our pre-law and pre-med tracks. So if you are interested in going on to law school, you can work with our pre-law advising office to make sure you're taking the correct classes. Um, to be able to be a, a strong applicant to the law programs. 
or if you're interested in going to medical, dental, nursing school, veterinary school, you can choose any major on campus and work with our pre-health advising office and they'll make sure you're on the right path to taking the correct uh, science courses you need to be able to go on to that advanced schooling after SMU. Then we have the Lyle School of Engineering. The Lyle School of Engineering is home to about 28 different specializations in engineering. Um, they would include mechanical and civil, computer science, computer engineering, uh, electrical and environmental engineering. Underneath each of those areas, you can add on different specializations. So for example, you can add a biomedical specialization onto any of those fields. Um, there's computer science with cybersecurity specialization, computer science with video game development. Um, so it really allows you to kind of hone in on that area that you're really interested in. The other unique thing for our engineering school is that they have twice the national average of female engineers. The national average for an undergraduate engineering college is usually about 16 to 17 percent female. At SMU, the Lyle School is home to about 34 to 35 percent female, um, and it seems like it's increasing every year. The other cool thing with our engineering school is that you can add a fifth year master's onto any of the undergraduate degrees. So you can uh, study for four years, get your bachelor's in engineering, and then uh, stay a fifth year and earn your master's as well. Then we have the Simmons School of Education and Human Development. The Simmons School is home to only two majors. One is education, so if you want to go into the classroom after graduation, you can uh, double major within the area you want to uh, teach, as well as a major in education, so your teacher certified at graduation and ready to go into the classroom. The second major in the Simmons School is Applied Physiology and Sports Management. The Applied Physiology major has some areas you can uh, get specialized, specialized in, so Applied Physiology, if you want pre-physical therapy, sports medicine, there's sports management if you want the business side of athletics, and then there's sports performance leadership if you want to go into uh, coaching and uh, working with a team that way. Then we have the Cox School of Business. The Cox School of Business is home to the business majors, obviously, so that'd be uh, accounting, marketing, finance, real estate finance, general business, anything on those lines will be through here. The admission to, into the business school, as you can see on the slide, it is directed admission, which means on your application, when it asks you for your number one and number two preferred major, as long as you put a business major on one or two, you'll be automatically reviewed for the business school admission. You uh, it can always change your major once you're here at the university. If you want to be reviewed for admission to the business school once you're here at the end of your freshman year, um, but that will be a competitive process, obviously. But something to also keep in mind is that there are some other business alternative majors at the university to maybe explore as well. There is economics through the humanities college. And then in the, business, in the engineering school, there is a major called management science. Management science is gonna be kind of our data analytics of business. Um, and then if you just wanna maybe dabble in business, but you don't wanna major in it, you can study a minor in business without being admitted to the business school. So you could do history with a minor in business, you could do art with a minor in business, you could do econ with a minor in business. And that'll be able to get you that business background as well. Then we have the Meta School of the Arts. Meta School of the Arts is home to our visual, performing, and communication arts. Our visual artists of drawing, painting, photography, film, and media, those students will need to submit a portfolio during their senior year application to the university. So you need to make sure you're keeping an eye on those deadlines. And then our performing artists, dancing, singing, performing an instrument, or acting, those students will need to do an audition during the senior year of high school to be reviewed for those areas. The performing and the visual arts are what we call dual admission. You need a yes from the art school, you need a yes from the admission office, and you get the two yeses, you can be a part of that program. The art school is also home to the communication arts. So communication arts would be journalism, public relations, advertising, um, anything on those lines will be through the art school as well. Another big thing about your college experience is what you're doing outside of the classroom. And that's no different at SMU. We definitely want you to find clubs, organizations, possibly going to the sporting events if that's what you're up to. Uh, but there's a lot of things happening on campus to make you have that full college experience. Um, SMU has over 200 clubs and organizations to get involved with. And whether it's something you're really passionate about in high school that you want to continue, or maybe it's something you want to just try something new, um, there should be something for everyone's interests. 
There's also 17 Division I sports teams here at the university. So you can go to all the athletic events for free with your student ID, uh, which really allows you to go support the Mustangs, which is really fun. Um, our football team has been ranked in the top 25 recently, as well as our soccer team um, and women's equestrian, men's golf. And you can go support these top 25 teams um, for free with your ID, which is really great. Another big part of your SMU experience is gonna be your residential life. You are required to live on campus for your first two years and you're guaranteed housing for your first two years. Your third and fourth year is optional. So you can start if you like, you move off if you like, that's up to you. But the first two years are required and guaranteed. When you decide to come to SMU, you're gonna be randomly assigned to one of our 11 residential commons. That residential commons is your home for both freshman and sophomore year. So you actually live in that same building for both years. And it really allows you to build a community with everyone that's there. And the other cool thing is that each commons is a mix between all majors and it's a mix between people from all over. We do not have an all freshman dorm, we don't have an honors dorm, we don't have an engineering dorm. Everyone's mixed together, which is really great because it allows you again to meet people from all over. The other cool thing about your residential commons is that there's a faculty in residence or a fur as we like to say it. And so you can talk with your faculty in residence and connect with them. They really want to connect with students in a more relaxed atmosphere outside of the classroom. And each faculty in residence will also host usually a weekly event for the students in their building. And so that also gives you another opportunity to get connected with them and utilize them as a great resource on um, your academics, but also just how to get connected to SMU. Something else that you maybe should be thinking about in your college experience is possibly studying abroad. About one third of our student body will study abroad at least once during their four years here at the university. And we encourage you to study abroad because we definitely think that adds to your, your experiences as well as your view, global perspectives. Um, about 150 different programs are offered through our study abroad office, but there's an abroad program for every single major. Um, it's really up to you with where you wanna go and how long you wanna be gone. And there's summer programs, there's semester programs, there's year long programs. If you don't wanna go internationally, we do have a campus in Taos, New Mexico. And then our Taos, New Mexico campus will offer January, May, June, and August term courses. So you can go out to the Taos campus for those terms and you get a few, one or two classes done and um, get out the Texas Eve for the summer. So the Taos campus is a really cool place to explore as well. Now the fun part, the application process. So if you're a senior right now, this is what you're going through. And with the applications listed on the right-hand side of the slide and the deadlines on the left-hand side of the slide, um, those applications are available now. So starting August 1st of senior year, the applications open up and the Common App and the My Coalition application are accepted by universities all over the country. The Applied Texas application is accepted by universities all over the state of Texas. And then the SMU online application is on our website and it's accepted by only SMU. Between all four applications, we have no preference on which one you use. Uh, they all ask the same questions. They will all give us the same information. It's really up to you which, with whichever one's easiest for you to fill out. Um, so definitely look at the applications and make your choice that way. The first deadline to submit your application by is November 1st. On November 1st, there are two different options to apply by. There's early action and early decision one. The differences between the two is early decision one is a binding option. So that means you know us is the place you wanna be, you know you'd be here if you're admitted. Well, you can show us that interest and that passion by submitting your signed contract with your application. And if you're admitted to SMU under early decision one, we'll be expecting to see you on campus the next August. The second option is early action. On early action, it's non-binding. That just means you submit your application by November 1st with all your needed documents, and uh, you submit that by November 1st, you will receive your decision by mid-December, December 15th, usually around there. The second option is early, uh, the second deadline is January 15th, and there's an early decision two, which is binding, as well as regular decision, which is non-binding. Students who apply January 15th will hear back in mid-March, so if you want to find out your decision early and you don't even bound to us, just do early action. You get your decision in mid-December. It gives you plenty of time to figure out uh, your options and get your questions answered. Maybe you make a final trip to campus, um, but it also gives you plenty of time to work with us throughout the application process. 
Within your application, we do a holistic review approach. There's not just one thing that outweighs everything else. The way I like to think about it is that we want someone who's academically prepared, but we also want someone who's gonna bring something else to campus. So we do look at every single thing that you submitted with your application. We read all the letters, we read your essay. We wanna get the full picture of who you are. The bullet points on the left-hand side of the slide are gonna show you um, kind of the factors that we do look into, obviously your GPA, your classroom performance in those classes and how you did. Um, hopefully your GPA has been going up throughout high school. If it's not, tell us why not. We want that full picture of who you are and um, if there's something that we need to know, make sure you let us know about it. But we'll also look at your GPA in relation to your rigor of curriculum. So your APs, pre-APs, honors, IB, dual credit, Whatever the challenging courses offered to you are, definitely make sure you're taking advantage of those because uh, it definitely will challenge you and get you ready to come to our college level courses. I do want to make sure that you do hopefully are calm because we definitely know COVID has been a tough situation for students all over the country and all over the world. Um, but we will take your GPA and your curriculum in context of the situation um, for spring of 2020 as well as fall of 2020. So if your school did make adjustments on your classes or your GPA, um, we will receive that information with your high school transcript um, and we'll make sure to have that full picture that way too. For your ACT and SAT, we are going to be test optional for the 2021 application cycle. So if you are applying to SMU, MU to enter in the fall of 2021, you do not need to submit an SAT or ACT test score. If you have taken the test, maybe you didn't do that well, don't worry about sending us the score. Or maybe if you haven't been able to take the test because of canceled test dates, again, you do not need to send us the score. If you are debating on having a score sent to SMU, you can see in the blue on the right hand side of the slide where our averages from last year. If you're in the blue or if you're on the upper end of the blue, feel free to send us that score. If you're below the blue, then I just don't need to send it. That's not a problem with us. The letters of recommendation are also going to be a way for us to learn about you. The only required letter recommendation has to come from your high school counselor. So make sure you get to know your high school counselor, make sure they get to know you so they can write you a recommendation letter. Or if you go to a large school, your counselor doesn't know you that well, and we do know students uh, go to large schools. Um, in that case, your counselor needs to at least sign off on our recommendation form because we want your school to be aware that you're applying to us. But in that case, I always do recommend having a teacher or a coach or an advisor for a club to also submit a recommendation letter for you so we can hear from a different perspective. Even if you know your counselor that well, it always is fun to hear from the teacher perspective or maybe an employer perspective if you have a part-time job. Um, again, we love to hear your full picture and who you are. And then the extracurricular activities can be listed out on your application. But if you actually have a formatted resume with a little more detailed information, feel free to email that to our office. Again, we love to see what you've been passionate about, what you've enjoyed during your high school career, whether it's connected to your school or maybe it's in the community. Um, whatever you have seen as a time commitment for yourself outside the classroom, tell us all about that. Again, we want that full picture. And we know going to a university like SMU, a private university, is an investment. We know. Um, it's always a conversation within your family about the price and we want to let you know and make sure that you are aware that SMU does war award a lot of merit scholarship as well as need-based aid. Usually about 75 to 80 percent of our student, bo uh, student body is on some kind of merit or need-based assistance and when you apply to SMU you will be automatically reviewed for all of our merit-based scholarships. All of our merit-based scholarships are based off of your high school academics so make sure you've done well in your high school courses and you will still be reviewed for all the same academic scholarships without an SAT or ACD test score. So again, if you haven't been able to take the test or if you're, if you're not setting us your test score, you will still be reviewed for all the same merit scholarships. And there is one scholarship that you do need to submit something additional for if you want to be reviewed for. It's called the Hunt Leadership Scholarship. The Hunt Leadership Scholarship is due January 15th of senior year. So make sure you keep an eye out on that deadline and make sure you go to their website, Google SMU Hunt Scholarship, and it'll pull up the website for the Hunt Scholarship Program. That is the only scholarship that SMU awards that does require an extra application. Everything else in the university is automatic consideration. 
For need-based aid, we do ask that you submit the FAFSA, which is the free application for federal student aid, as well as the CSS profile. The CSS profile is similar to the FAFSA. It asks many of the same questions, but uh, it'll make you eligible for SMU's grant money as well. So make sure you do submit both FAFSA and CSS profile so you can be reviewed for our need-based aid. One big thing that is going to set SMU apart from an, any other university that you're looking at is going to be our location. I did kind of hint on that at the beginning of the slides, but our location of Dallas is an amazing opportunity for our students to take advantage in with jobs, and internships, part-time uh, part-time experiences like that is really great to build up your resume while you're an undergrad and possibly it allows you to have a job or an internship during the school year compared to if you're in a smaller college town you have to wait till the summer to get to the city with our location you can work your class schedule around whatever job or internship or co-op you may be having um, the other cool thing about dallas is that there's always concerts sporting events um, there's always something fun happening in the city so it's a really fun place to be located as well as, as a college student and students will always ask, how do we get around the city? You could bring a car your freshman year if you wanted. I usually encourage students to go that first semester without a car so you can get connected to campus. Um, but there is a great light rail network in the city called the DART. And as an SMU student, you can get a four year free pass um, to, for the light rail. So you, there's a stop right next to campus, hop on the light rail, and you can take it a few stops and you can go to downtown. Or if you're flying to DFW airport, it's about a 45 minute ride on the light rail. Um, so it's easy to utilize the city that way as well. Students will always ask how do we get connected to these jobs and internships. And there are three career centers on campus that will help promote jobs and internships and making sure you're gonna be prepared for that interview. There's a career center through the engineering school that focuses on engineering, on the engineering opportunities. There's a career center through the business school that focuses on the business opportunities. And then the largest of the three career centers is housed in our student center and they will focus in on humanities and the arts. And you can take advantage of these career centers by going to their uh, open office hours and doing uh, resume workshops, their mock interviews, they'll do career fair prep, they'll host career fairs throughout the school year so you can get connected with these companies. Um, but utilizing the career center as early as freshman year is very important to make sure that you are putting your best foot forward and doing what you need to do to get into your industry or your job that you want to be a part of. There's also a lot of opportunities for research at the university. So if you're more of a, if you kind of want more academic side and doing research in the sciences or in any field on campus, um, there are research opportunities through our professors and through the different departments. And uh, that is a good way also to build up your resume too. So that covers a little of everything about the university. On this last slide is our general email address that we monitor daily, as well as our phone number. So feel free to give us a call or send us an email, and we're happy to answer whatever questions you may have um, throughout the application process or about SMU. Currently, we are still doing in-person tours. So if you do find yourself in the Dallas area, feel free to come and visit campus. You can schedule a tour that way. And keep an eye on your email because we will be setting out um, a lot of different virtual opportunities to learn about SMU. And uh, if you want to get connected with a student, a current student ambassador, let us know. Um, we definitely want to make sure you're getting the full picture and answering whatever questions you may have. Thanks again for joining me today, and I hope you have a great day.